everything is access control, so even I can't go in because I'm not a pharmacist, so... I'm a nurse, so I'm a clinical nurse specialist, but I special, my passion is in cancer care. Um, we have one or two that are a bit sort of uh, more themed. I look after my concierge patients in here. Okay. Uh, so different from the others, and we have two specialist rooms for gynecological examinations as well. Oh. So, but in total, we have seven rooms. So, uh, on this side, we've got five chairs, reclinable chairs. Um, and obviously the patients can have their own privacy. We've got these um, screens that are fixed to the wall. So if a patient just didn't want, <coughs> they wanted to. Sometimes patients like to chat to other patients even though they've never met because sometimes they're here for five, six hours a day, you know? But sometimes they don't just want to be on their own, but if they have a visitor staying with them, they've got a chair. We also have an end screen so they can really be screened off if they want to. Um, the laboratory is here. Just like mm -hmm. so, so that you know, all the, the blood that you get to the lab, all the lab tests are done. Mm -hmm. Business day. This is, sorry, this is Dr. Adeniji, who is a consultant, clinical, yeah. and radiation oncologist. Okay. So, ultrasound scan. Okay. Yeah. Um, which can do both cardiac, like echo. Uh, vaginal ultrasound, prostate, whatever, or chest, breast ultrasound. They have different probes, you see, for the, for the different ones. So I am working very hard, actually. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's good. So, this lady came to give her. There's a patient in there, so. There's a patient in there, Abby. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, unfortunately, you need to see the CT scan. Maybe when time will come down there are finished. Mammogram for women and I'm selling you we have this new 3D mammogram. Digital ultrasound. A uh, digital X-ray, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So and before you had to there's one, you had to the same one lying down, so now they just see what they take. But also you can keep the images in the cloud for up to 15 years, which is international standards for, for cancer. And you because can, um, you can access them. Exactly, wow. exactly. Okay, welcome, I'm Dr. Mutukwe Elimite Ogunsi. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Marcel Ruth Cancer Center and Specialist Hospital here in Victoria Island, Lagos. That's quite a tricky question to remember exactly when, but I think the first seeds were probably planted in my mind, I don't know, maybe about seven years ago or so, um, when, you know, just from coming and being involved in um, healthcare here in Nigeria um, in a different way, but also being based in the UK at the time, where I've been working for over 30 years. It occurred to me that, you know, I wanted to do something different in my retirement and to come back home at a time when I would still be able to work and to have some impact um, in healthcare. I'm very excited to be here because I think there's a lot of uh, new things happening in health, in the healthcare industry in Nigeria at the moment and um, great to be part of it. So, I mean, first of all, I want to say that actually we don't only look after cancer patients here. So that's it's a cancer center and a specialist hospital, so we look after other specialties as well. But to focus on the cancer story, um, so when I left medical school, I um, got very interested in hematology, which is a condition where you look after patients with blood disorders, um, from as simple as iron deficiency anemia to sickle cell. We have the largest incidence of sickle cell patients in worldwide in Nigeria. Um, and then obviously in cancers, leukemias, lymphomas. I went to the UK to do my postgraduate studies, did four years of internal medicine uh, and got my qualification and then subspecialized in hematology. And whilst I was working, I worked in some of the 
probably uh, best known cancer centers like the Royal Marston Hospital and gained a lot of experience in what I was doing. Now coming back and forth to Lagos and, and doing some work here, it became very apparent to me that there was a big gap in particular with patients getting um, good access and accurate diagnosis um, in terms of cancer care. And also, I obviously got referred patients from here coming to the UK to be seen. Um, and it's, it became an issue because very, very quickly, cancer treatment, especially if you're not insured, um, becomes very expensive. So the patients will start treatment and obviously I was glad that we, they were able to come along so that we could make the right diagnosis um, and give them the option of the best treatment but when they ran out of money then of course it becomes quite a complicated problem for them. So I think that's where I began to think look actually in Dubai um, if you're going to um, spend the rest of your career doing something that you really really enjoy which is clinical medicine and on the other side research and teaching uh, what best way to do it but to come and fill what is actually a large gap here um, and, and bring sort of international standards of care home um, so that also it means that patients can be looked after at home with their relatives um, at a time when they're already very anxious, very worried about uh, a diagnosis like cancer. So the, the commonest cancers worldwide are breast cancer in women um, and prostate cancer in men, um, and then lung cancer, lymphomas, um, and then in women also things like uterine, endometrial, cervical cancers, they're all the, you know, the commonest cancers. Um, well, I'm an adult hematologist, adult hemato-oncologist. In terms of doing my postgraduate training in the UK, it's a totally different route if you're going to become a pediatric oncologist. You've got to do pediatric internal medicine first and then go off and do that. Um, so I've not looked after children for a very long time and I'm not going to pretend to be a pediatrician. Um, so we're going to look after adult cancers to begin with, but I'm also already in discussions with a number of colleagues who are pediatricians to come and collaborate with us and to come and work with us. Um, already spoken to somebody who we could potentially do pediatric sickle cell clinics together. And of course, um, there are pediatric oncologists here, as well as um, those who are coming from um, abroad to come and practice, who can come and use our facilities, which when you, we go around, you'll see that we have the option for people to come and look after their own patients here. So eventually, I hope that we will be able to cover the wide breadth of cancers. Um, I've been not just me specifically looking after those patients. In fact, I'm not a solid tumor um, cancer specialist, but I have partnered with um, um, a solid tumor cancer specialist and have got two full-time solid cancer tumor specialists, oncology specialists in the building working full-time with me. So we have the opportunity to treat all cancers. It's basically the, the long answer, but not just by me alone. Um, and also just to raise that, um, Already what we do is once a week, actually today from at, at 4 p.m. every Thursday, we have something called a tumor board where we do it by Zoom and we have specialists, all Nigerians though, um, some who are based in the US, some who are based in the UK, um, and they come to the Zoom with us and we discuss every case. So a new diagnosis, we discuss somebody where we think we need to change treatment because maybe they're not responding or they have side effects, we discuss. And before we come finish a patient's treatment and sign them off, we also discuss. Um, so that's the way so that we're treating um, and discussing using international guidance and people who are um, both in the country as well as outside the country. That's how we are managing our patients now. The, the, the biggest difference, okay, to, to look, the way to look at it is that in the developed world, particularly in the UK, the, the US is slightly different, there is a government funded healthcare system. Right, that works and that covers from the mini school to the most complex.
kind of treatments. In fact, there are some cases where you're better off in the health national health service because that's where you're going to get the people with the really um, top skills, the people who've done the research uh, and so on in that sort of setup. So it's a different way of thinking. So you already have that. So if you decide that you want to go into the private sector, it's more like a choice thing, okay? Most of the time, you can access this kind of, kind of care in the health national health system. And obviously, if you're a citizen, it's free of charge because you can pay your taxes. So that's so it's, it's really quite different. Obviously, in this part of the world, most of Africa, we don't have developed public systems um, where people can access care easily. So the in private sector has become the place to go to get the care that you need. For me, I mean, it's been, there's not two ways about saying it, it's been a lot of work, a lot of research. We've, my husband and I traveled to different countries to look at different models that we could bring here because I knew that it wasn't a question of just knowing, okay, the UK system and maybe the US system. We thought, how is that going to work here? How is this going to work for Nigerians in Nigeria? But how are we going to maintain international healthcare standards in Nigeria? Um, so there was a gentleman who came this morning, fasting bloods at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by 11 o'clock had had all his tests done. All the bloods, all the imaging, including CT scan, echocardiogram, everything all done in a matter of three hours. So that's what we can provide because we have everything on this one-stop shop site. And the one-stop shop in terms of everything, diagnostics, the bloods, the imaging, but also one-stop in that screen. And if we pick up anything, we can also treat because we can do chemotherapy here, we can do surgery here, and we can do radiotherapy here. We come down there, I finish. Mammoth brown for women, and I'm selling you with this new 3D mammoth brown. She is um, more comfortable for people. Hello, Dr. Denji. Hello. This is the of Business Day. This is, sorry, this is Dr. Adenji, who is a consultant, clinical, and radiation oncologist. He's here full time with us. And obviously, a patient just had a procedure. We do have pap smears in here. So for the women, best ultrasound, mammo, pap smear, you, patient journey, right? Digital ultrasound, a digital x-ray, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, but also, we can keep the images in the cloud for up to 15 years, which is international standards for, for cancer. And you can, um, you can access them. Exactly. Exactly. His hashtag why go abroad? You know, that's the, that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So um, this is international healthcare in Lagos Island, done by skilled doctors who have trained and worked abroad for many years who've come back and are here to look after the patients on a day-to-day -day basis and in facilities that we have developed very carefully thinking about the patient's journey um, in a way that actually when you walked in it doesn't feel like a hospital right um, that hopefully promotes healing right you know and I've already seen that actually in some of my patients there was a lady who was here about a week ago um, who the family thought she was dying um, and I'm, I'm not joking two days later she was off oxygen. By the end of the week, she was eating pounded yam and whatever. And apparently, she had not eaten at all for about two months. She'd been on ensure liquid diet, you know. And they were asking her, she said, if you're in this place, if you're in this place, won't you want to leave? <laughs> Can you imagine, you know? 